Live from Nassau in the Bahamas, it's theCUBE, covering Polygon 18. Brought to you by Polymath. Hello everyone, welcome to a special exclusive CUBE conversation here in the Bahamas for Polycon 18. It's a cryptography, uh, cryptocurrency, I should say, show with blockchain. It's a great event, it's about securitized tokens and token economics, the value economy that's changing the world is certainly in play. It's the beginning of a massive wave that's coming. We've reported on theCUBE and SiliconANGLE before. We're here with the co-founder of Ethereum and the CEO of Decentral, also maker of Jax. Anthony, great to see you. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. So, you know, we've been covering a lot of emerging waves and I got to say that, you know, I've seen some waves in my days, but this one's a tsunami. You can see the, the water pulling out and you see the exposed clams and crabs out there. A complete shift of value, data, users, decentralized impacts of business models to industries. I mean, it's just mind blowing, it's intoxicating but a new community is evolving. I mean, it reminds me of the, the early days of the personal computer combined with all the internetworking and the internet kind of rolled up into one massive shift. Mm. How do you see it from your perspective, being on the, the inner core of this community? What's your take? Definitely the biggest thing of all those things you mentioned, it's, it's yeah, the tsunami. It's, uh, we, we started with, with, with information when the internet was started, ways to, to be able to move information globally uh, disrupting everything to do with publishing companies, with postal service, anything, anything to do with information transfer. And I've been around since uh, you know the, BB, the BBS days, way back there before the internet even came about. So yeah. when the internet came about, it was my first thing that I'm like, wow, this is this is going to just change the way information moves. Yeah. And then when I got into this in 2012, into yeah. the, the crypto space, into Bitcoin at the time, I'm like, wow, this is this is beyond the internet. This is value transfer now without needing intermediaries. And the disruption that's going to happen is going to just completely change finance, the way the currencies are handled. And it's going to, it's going to touch every single sector. So this is much bigger. And it's, and it's bigger because the everyday person can get involved with it. You know, one of the things that we were just commenting, this show Polycon 18 put on by Polymath, which makes a securitized token model um, uh, for companies to use. Uh, sets up kind of a growth and funding model. Uh, we get, we're going to talk more about that on our live feed. But, you know, I noticed a lot of Canadians are here. Besides having ice hockey, one of my favorite sports, being from the East Coast in the U.S., um, I remember in the 80s, a lot of uh, PKI stuff being done in, in Canada. A lot of really important cryptography work was done in Canada. There's a lot of amazing computer science programs in Canada. There's a lot of progressive things going on in Canada. Um, can you share your thoughts on sure. that? Because I think it's, you're starting to see that, uh, that that wave coming down. I won't call it a cold spell, I'll call it like innovation spell coming from the north uh, into the US and then all around the world. Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a real dis dis uh, disproportionate amount of Canadians in this whole <laughs> scene, which is really interesting. I was at an event called the Satoshi Roundtable about a month ago in Cancun, and it was about 20% were actually from Canada, and it was a global event. And what I think it is, is it's a community basis. It's in 2012, I started the Toronto Bitcoin Meetup Group. And that was like, what, what are we, six, six, six years ago. And the amount of people that have, flow, that have come through Decentral and come through the, the Meetup Group that we started, started just sparking so many different things. That's, that's where Ethereum mm -hmm. came from. Uh, Polymath from Toronto here. Uh, Trevor and I go back, way back to 2012. Yeah. So I think it's a matter of the community being built up really early on in Toronto and Canada that have led to the spark of what's going on. Yeah. And now with things like the, the, the public markets and the way Canada is, it's kind of being a, a good fertile ground for, for uh, companies actually going live on, on, on different exchanges, the, the TSX in, in, in Canada, and that's helping to facilitate things. So ton of talent, ton of amazing things that I think yeah. hopefully Canada can prove itself to be the, the global headquarters. However, there's also regulatory things. Since you have a lot of Canadian companies that are saying we're going to set up offshore because we don't know how Canada is treating things. That's also a counterbalance. But in general, there's, there's yeah. yeah, tons of good things coming out from, from Canada and from Toronto. You know, we were early on the cloud wave going back to 2000, um, you know, late 2000s. Uh, and now you're starting to see with cloud computing some visibility. I see Amazon Web Services kicking ass and they were just blowing away their numbers. But you're seeing kind of a clear visibility between infrastructure as a service and SaaS. And just to kind of use as a metaphor for kind of what's going on here is it, the whole platform as a service never happened. So you got infrastructure and you got applications. So yeah. This community is emerging, it's still small, it's growing, it's dynamic, it's robust, very intimate, but there's some things going on at the infrastructure level that are super important, 
and there's certainly a tsunami of new kinds of software developers coming in. Yeah. So comment on those two things because you know it's kind of moving train, it's happening in parallel <laughs> at the same time. Definitely. Can you share some color yeah, on the I mean, dynamics between the infrastructure progress and innovation and speed scale tech and then the tsunami of these decentralized application developers which are coming in from 13 year olds to 65 and older. I mean, across the gamut. We're building infrastructure. That's what it's about. I've always had a very long term thing with everything, whether I invest in things or do it, I'm super long term in the whole space. So 2012, everything was Bitcoin for me. 2013, started developing wallets. I realized that the wallet is the, is the, the browser for value transfer. You got the internet browser, that's what moves information. Yeah. Now we're in the age of value, and the wallet is what enables people to, to manage and move digital assets. So I started building wallets for Bitcoin. When we started Ethereum, I'm like, okay, there's beyond Bitcoin now. Started Ethereum, uh, did that for about a year, and then went back to building the interface, the actual platform for all these technologies to, to be able to utilize, to manage and move digital assets. So that's what I focus on, is the infrastructure play of connecting to all these blockchains and mm -hmm. providing the user experience to be able to, the masses like my dad, to be able to actually have the browser moment. It's like, oh, now I know what I can do with this. And that's what's been missing, and that's what I've been focusing on. And then in there is where you have the apps start getting built onto stuff. So that's always been my play, is to build the single interface for every blockchain, support the entire ecosystem, mm -hmm. not focus on one technology, because who knows what's going to actually yeah. live now for a long time. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm doing, is, is building that, that single interface that my dad can use to understand how to move and manage the digital assets, and then partner with companies, projects, the polymaths, the Aeons, all these companies from, from the space that are offering value in different areas, and we want to be that single interface that brings it all yeah. together. So definitely infrastructure play, but also applications that can be built on top of that infrastructure. Yeah, I mean, infrastructure needs to be enabled, and you, and you think about the browser, right? I mean, the browser created uh, the internet to be usable, and the web was yeah. born because of it. And of course, HTTP protocol. Um, but it's interesting on the infrastructure side, I mean, I, I fought the wars back in the days with you know, SNA, DECnet, TCP IP was emerging through the OSI models. I remember you know, TCP IP was one of those moments, and people use that as an example, I hear it all the time, and you know, I even use it here and there, but that created a galvanizing moment where, hey, we can interoperate together with the standard stack and not for all seven layers, but you know, it, it, it made things happen. The question <laughs> that people are asking is, it's kind of a TCP IP moment in this industry, but is there 40 versions of it? Like, yeah. I mean, so is that an issue? Is that reality? No. I, I, I don't think, I think it's actually, I always equate it to being there being websites. And what I do is I'm building the browser so that actually the websites can actually interact with the technology. So they're, do, they're focusing on different sectors and they're making different plays in all these different areas that are going to touch with value transfers. Mm -hmm. Value transfer is amazing. That's what's going to disrupt things beyond information. Yep. And then with smart contracts and the thing we did with Ethereum, it's like, okay, this is all coming together to touch law, insurance, um, gaming, all the different sectors are going to be actually uh, changed. Yeah. I don't want to say disrupted, I don't like that yeah. word, but changed yeah. and evolved into great, amazing things. But these, 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 these protocols are being developed, our choice, and the ones that actually are the ones that are going to create the most amount of value and great user experience will be the ones that actually we're going to carry on. So yeah. it's, it's amazing to see the amount of competition, yeah. the amount of new projects, and the ones that are creating the values, what's going to actually survive. And, the, and that dog will hunt, basically. Yeah. Okay, the wallet question, I love this, love this simplicity model. What's your vision on the wallet? Because you could say, okay, there's multiple wallets, there's a diversity of wallets, I can have a brown wallet, black wallet, leather wallet, all kinds of different wallets. Are you looking at it as, an, as a technology enabler that you're doing or as an actual wallet? Because again, what we learned in open source is why build something when someone else already has it, right? So yeah. that's the, the ethos of most developers. So are you looking at the wallet as saying, I'm going to provide a wallet capability the, the wallet's end the to end, end, or is it uh, no, base the, code? It's interface. Okay. The wallet's the engine. Yeah. The wallet is what's needed in order to connect with all the different blockchains. That's what we've been building over the last two years. Is actually the infrastructure to connect to all the different blockchains. Mm -hmm. It's the interface that we built on eight platforms. So you can have a you can have a single interface on all the platforms that ties yourself in with a twelve word key that enables you to derive keys for all the blockchains. So yeah. the key system that we offer, the interface to all the connections, which is the browser. And then the back end AWS almost like structures to yeah. all the different blockchains is, is our value add to all of our partners. And we're all about driving partner interaction. So simplicity is a big part of it. Super and simple, ease yeah, of use, definitely. ease of integration. Yeah, we need the interface. There's, there's, yeah. You can't be using 10 different wallets for all the yeah. different things you're trying to manage. So we're trying to create that single yeah. interface across all the things that supports and drives the whole community forward. Dave Vellante, who you just met, and I always talk about this all the time. You know, it's like you built, if people want to sell like, certain technology a certain way, but it reminds me of the gaming industry, you know. There became a market for game engines, but 
that only because someone built a successful game and someone said, hey, I'll make, I want a game engine, you have an engine, and I don't want to have to build an engine, I'll just use a game engine because someone did it and that became an industry. You can't sell a game engine if there's no gaming. Right? No. So, yeah. so you have to have an application that might have some core technology. Is that what's happening in the wallet world right now? Are you, yeah. you kind of doing that? Is that? So for us, that's exactly the same way. It's, there is, we build the infrastructure and now we have partners that create apps and tap into our back end so that they don't have to worry about all that stuff. An example is, is, is Coinbase. So Coinbase and us uh, came to an agreement last year where we'll start helping them to, uh, they have a, an app or they have a service where you can use your credit card to buy Litecoin, Bitcoin, mm -hmm. Ethereum. Well, inside of Jax, you'll be able to add that integration, connect them to all the chains. So their users can actually still buy that, but we can flip it, use yeah. another partner and give them Polymath. Yeah. That's yeah. that's the thing. It's about creating value with the different apps, and we want to be the, the store that connects all these different apps to the blockchain so they don't have to worry about that. BitPay is another example. They enable you to pay invoices in Bitcoin, but they only want to deal with Bitcoin. Well, in Jax, you can pay with any currency. We flip it to Bitcoin with one of our partners, send them Bitcoin. Yeah. They don't have to worry about all the back end. So you're so, creating an interoperability of money and value. A value, yeah, definitely. Or fiat money, well, you know, crypto money. And the experience money. that my dad's going to use to understand this whole space. Yeah, yeah. They, don't gotta, they, don't gotta write, they don't have to write code to integrate. Like, yeah. The user can just use it. All right, talk about the uh, developer community. What's your advice to developers that are on board and looking for guidance and navigating through? And people are learning really fast. You're seeing people come into the industry literally with some background that might not be related to tech, but have natural math skills, natural yeah. coding skills. They're coming in and actually making a difference, joining communities. What's your advice to these developers who want to build decentralized applications? So, so there's two separate kind of devs. There's ones that can be really good devs that can be onboarded into the space. They're not working on protocol level stuff. And then there's the devs that actually are working on the protocol stuff, and they're hard to find. They're hard to secure because you need the experience of number of years in order to do that. For us, we actually look for good devs that we can bring in and onboard into what we do, which is not necessarily solving major problems. Yeah. It's working with protocols that are solving it and integrating those protocols in. Mm -hmm. So the protocol level is very difficult to find developers right now. So I would suggest as much experience on that is going to be what you can do to get ahead. Mm -hmm. But in general, if you're a good dev, don't be scared of the space. And if you can align yourself with a company that can help treat, help teach you yeah. how to get in, that's what we want. Like we don't actually target blockchain devs. Yeah. We target good devs and we let them know, yeah. we don't even advertise blockchain. Because <laughs> sometimes they go, oh, blockchain, I don't have that. But if you get good devs, yeah. we can actually teach them on our end. So it's actually, we did a job fair about a week ago. We had 100 devs come out, pre-qualified yeah. devs that we, we, we spent about a month trying to pre-qualify them. They came in, already had the experience, and we got yeah. 100 of them come in, because they're interested in the space. Yeah. And we, we market it as, you don't need to know blockchain. Yeah. Good devs will we'll get you into it. You know, we were talking last night, we were having some cocktails with some crypto guys and, and gals, and it was funny. Um, we talked about two things, One, and I want to get your thoughts on reaction to one, both of them. One was latency kills, and the other one was women in the ecosystem. This event here has a lot of women on the agenda, um, and so you're seeing a lot of great diversity going on. So what's your reaction? Latency kills and the role of latency is a, as something to watch and uh, design against, and then uh, the diversity angle. Can you first can you first clarify what you mean about latency kills? I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, in terms of that. like uh, networking, right? So like for for you know round trip times, so you have a decentralized network. You're writing to the blockchain. Oh, you Let, just mean the slowness with decentralized networks? Yeah, decentralized networks. Yeah, there's def throw that's in. definitely a major issue, which is scalability. Yeah. There's a major issue which will be solved, and and yeah. that will be solved. I don't really think too much about it, except the problem solvers are dealing with that, and they will get past to the point where we can use and scale these technologies globally. And there's because of the competition. You're the not worried systems. about it. You just see it as no, just a, a problem space. I don't anything. It's, this will happen, it's <laughs> yeah. coming. As awesome. for the second thing, I look at, I'd like to look at individuals. So I, I don't really look at the gender thing yeah. with it. It's more about individuals. And yeah. and um, I don't want to be say, I'm going to start now focus on encouraging women to get in the space. It's Hopefully they will start taking initiatives yeah. just like everybody else does. So I, I tend not to look at the, the two types of the, of the things there. Well, me. I bring it up because the New York Times wrote a really negative story about um, you know women and not being in the space. And I was just highlighting that this event, PolyCon, but, uh, Polymath. But folks, it's like tech, it's, it's just it's the way just, it is. And, and why even think about it? Just yeah. it is what it is. Yeah, I hope we won't Do have to have wanna, these conversations the best anymore. The best, the best of the best people. And I've got a number of girls yeah. that work for me and they're, and they're fantastic. So, But yeah. I don't necessarily going to head a job right. and say, well, we got to bring in more women to do that. That doesn't make any yeah. sense. And that conversation shouldn't be, should be just assumed. Yeah. All right, so I want to get Anthony, get your thoughts on what you're working on. What are you working on right now? So you've got your company, you've done some great things. We know the Ethereum story, and that's continuing to evolve in a great way, with, attractive to developers. Uh, mm -hmm. And I saw Charlie up on a, on a panel in, with Bill Tai uh, in Dubai and really commenting on, uh, he's long on Ethereum. He actually said it's going to be more valuable than Bitcoin. A little haymaker for the young gun there on stage. Um, really important for developers. 
And you're pioneering with the wallet. What, what's the key things that you're working on, both on the technical product side and on the business front for uh, Decentral? So on the technical side has been for the last year and a half, building the backend infrastructure to be able to support 10 million, 15 million users. We haven't been advertising, we haven't been marketing what we've been doing because we think it's, it's the wrong approach to actually go and try to just look for user growth when your infrastructure is not ready to grow. So our focus has been fully on being able to support 15, 20 million users. We're at about 1 million right now, all organic, without advertising. So if you can't support that, why do you want to be advertising? So we've been focusing the last yeah. year and a half to ensure that we are scalable and that we can grow when we hit the go button. So this year is all about hitting that go button. It's infrastructure is now in place. We are set to support 10 million users. Yeah. And now it's, it's, it's the announcement which we did just recently about uh, Jax Liberty, which is our new platform, Jax 2.0, which is everything you need for the blockchain space. It's your block, it's your explorers, it's your charts, your graphs, your portfolio, your, your news directed on what your portfolio is. Mm -hmm. It's the one browser. You don't want to be using 10 different browsers to go to different websites. Yeah. We're, we've always had the goal to create the engine, which is the wallet, and then the interface, which is yeah. a, the single thing that the masses can use to understand the technology. So our focus is on partnerships, into the app store of our of our product that connects to all the back the block the uh, the back ends, and basically supporting every company, creating wins for everybody, uh, helping to push every product that actually has value, incentivizing people to create better valuable projects because then you'll get more support from us, and creating wins for everybody. I'm not about Ethereum. I'm not about Bitcoin. I'm about the whole yeah, ecosystem. Yeah, you're about the growth. Rising tide floats all boats. But what's yeah. the value proposition that you're offering to partners on the integration? Is it speed to deployment, speed to value, all of those things? So what's get, the getting key? your getting your token inside of Jax now gets you on eight platforms. And you don't okay. want to worry about your own, having a wallet for your separate okay. platform. It doesn't make any sense. Awesome. So what we do is we charge for integrations to come inside of our product, and then we ch then we have separate things. That's that's integration partners or token partners. Then we have service partners. Mm -hmm. That's the BitPay's, the Coinbase, the Crack, all those guys that can have apps or have integrations inside where we can expose our users to their services and they pay us. So our our proposition to them is more users and more service on a single interface so that we can direct their users, and we don't charge users anymore, yeah. we get paid through our, our integration. So yeah. think about us being paid for every win website visit. Yeah, that's good value. Okay, so now you're going to give a keynote on stage here at uh, the Polymath event called Polycon 18. What are you going to be talking about? What's the vibe? What's the script? Are you going to wing it? Do you have an agenda? Um, you're laid back, you're cool. Um, is there a talk format? What are you going to do? I, I never plan anything before I walk <laughs> up on stage. Literally, I like to look at the audience. Any preparation yeah. stuff for me doesn't make any sense. So I'll yeah. literally go up on stage and I yeah. always wing it from there. So it could be a little bit about, about just just people working together. Yeah. There's a lot of this versus that mentality. There's the, the whole thing of, of if you're not this, then you're that. It's the, if you're not Trump, then you're clear. I don't like that. I think yeah, there's a lot I of agree. in between. Yeah. There's a lot of things that, that, you know, it's about working together. It's creating great synergies, creating things that help the whole thing grow. And we've seen that, especially a lot of companies in Toronto. There's so many synergistic yeah. relationships of gaps being filled in from companies just in yeah. Toronto that add value. So Polycon, Polymath, security tokens, it was needed. Yeah. It was something I talked with Trevor about a year ago and he's taken it and, and, and flown with it. Um, we support Polymath, yeah. but I also invest in other securities platforms yeah. as well. T0 is something that I'm, that I'm looking to get in. I've got about 45 different projects right now. It's spreading the love. Yeah. It's, it's, it's saying yeah. let's all work together. As long as there's no scamming going on, I'm good. Let's work together. Let's all come together. You know, Anthony, I did some checking around on you before the interview, and I got to say, you're, you know community. Um, you know open source, you've been around, you've seen the formulas that work. I mean, you talk about an open source ethos that's now going totally mainstream, it's not a second tier citizen, by a long shot, that's, that's an old story. This um, uh, cryptocurrency and blockchain and this new decentralized community has a mission. I've noticed the pattern, right, and you're seeing Folks like yourself are doing amazing work and pioneering, and Thank also you. the hard work, you're putting the work in. There's a mission. Take a minute to explain what the mission is, because there are a lot of people that are aligning with this mission globally, not just on the technical front. You mentioned this diversity, and that's a good thing. What is the mission that really brings everyone together? Because that seems to be the magic that's well, going on here. I, I can't speak for other people, but for me, the mission is to improve life, reduce suffering, create value, create wealth and both knowledge and other things that can that can enable you to carry out those things. So my end game is improving life. Haven't fully baked out what that's going to be, but my step now is to create wealth of value, wealth of knowledge, wealth of re resources to be able to, to then tackle that afterwards. So it's all about, uh, you know, I, I don't take, I don't uh, accept money. I don't take people's money. It's all self-funded. We're about creating value. I like to, the fact that I don't have any partners, I can move really quickly, and I don't like to take people's money or hold people's money. Yeah. I want to empower people with the tools, or at least give them the tools so they can decide whether they want to be empowered or not. 
and I want to be able to just create yeah. stuff that's going to create amazing value, user experiences, mind-blowing experiences, <laughs> and just just help improve things and 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 yeah. and, and drive technology forward. And, you know, yeah. we align with that. We love that culture. We believe it's a pay it forward world. We've made our business at the Cube on paying it forward. Really appreciate you taking the time to pay it forward with us and share your content here. And uh, I want to say congratulations for all the amazing work you've done. You've worked hard. You've made a Thank great you. dent in the universe. And it's just getting started. So congratulations. One of the best interviews I've ever done. Thank you Thanks. so much. Appreciate it. Take appreciate care. It.